A first order separable differential equation has just a first order derivative in it. So here dy dx is a first order derivative. A second order derivative would be d2y dx2. We will deal with that in a later video. Okay, so what are we after here? Well, y is some function of x. So we want to find a function of x such that when we differentiate with respect to x, we get three times that function. And we also want the property that when x is naught, y is 1. So we can actually uh, sum up this boundary condition by saying that y at x equals 0 must equal 1. Okay, so what we do is we separate the variables. Um, that can be done. That's the only type of differential equation that we will consider in this course. So we should be able to bring all the y's to one side and all the x's to the other side. So um, what do we need to do to this differential equation? Well, we could start by multiplying both sides by dx. If we multiply the left-hand side by dx, we'll get dy. If we multiply the right-hand side by dx, we get 3y dx. Well, you can see what the next step is. We divide both sides by 3y. So now the differential equation is separated. The y variable is on the left hand side and the x variable is on the other side. The next step is just to put an integral sign in front of both sides. We're going to integrate both sides. Now, um, you can write this as 1 over 3 integral 1 over y re with respect to y equals the integral of dx, if you like. Okay, the 1 third is just a constant that can be pulled outside dy over y is just 1 over y times dy. So on the left hand side we have to integrate 1 over y with respect to y. Now 1 over y is a special function. Um, you do not write it as y to the minus 1 and attempt to integrate by adding 1 to the power. You'll end up with division by 0 which is undefined so you can just look this one up. It's log to the base e of y. We get an arbitrary constant but we know we can bring that over to the right hand side and combine it with the arbitrary constant from the right hand side. So we just have a single arbitrary constant that we can write on the right-hand side. Um, okay, we're integrating 1 with respect to x. That's just going to give us x. And I'll call the arbitrary constant c. So remember, we want our function y to have the property that y at x equals naught is 1. So to emphasize that y is a function of x, you could write y of x like this, if you like. Um, so 1 third ln of y at 0 is put 0 in for x, 0 plus c. y of naught is just 1. That's what we want. Y at, when x is naught, we want y to equal 1. It's the boundary condition that we're given. So now we found c. c is just 1 third ln of 1. ln of 1 is actually 0. You know, ln of 1 is just log to the base e of 1, and e to the 0 is 1. Um, C, sorry, c is 1 third times 0, which is 0. By the way, I forgot to mention that this gives us the general solution of the differential equation. It's called a general solution because we have a general constant c here that can be any number, and this will satisfy the differential equation. Um, I'll do the check of that later on. Now, down here, we have what's called a particular solution of the differential equation. So we have the general solution for a particular value of c, namely c equals naught in this case. Now, of course, we can make y the subject of this thing. Um, so ln y equals 3x. So y is equal to e to the power of the right-hand side. Okay, log to the base e of y is 3x. So y is e to the power of 3x. Okay, let's do a quick check. So here's our differential equation, and here's the boundary condition. We want y to equal 1 when x is naught, or we can write that as y at naught must equal 1. Okay, so we have to get dy dx. We have to differentiate e to the power of 3x with respect to x, of course. So this will be the left-hand side of the differential equation. Okay, this is dy dx. So if we differentiate e to the power of 3x, we get 3e to the 3x. If we differentiate e to the power of something, we just get it back. And we multiply by the derivative of the power. The derivative of 3x is 3. So we just apply the chain rule here. So that's the left-hand side. Now what about the right-hand side of the differential equation? Well, the right-hand side is 3 times y. So 3y is, well, it's just 3 times 
what we got e to the 3x so you can see that left hand side and right hand side are the same now what about the boundary condition let's get y at 0 so we plug 0 in for x that's e to the power of 3 times 0 well that's just e to the power of 0 which is 1 so y of 0 is indeed 1 Okay, let's th take this example here. We have the differential equation xy times dy dx equals 5 plus y squared. And the boundary condition is that y is equal to 2 when x is equal to 1. So remember, we want to find y, which is a function of x, but we want y at x equals 1 to be 2. Okay, this is a separable differential equation, as are all the differential equations So, um, uh, that we do here. So we should be able to bring all the y's to one side and all the x's to to the other side. Uh, how would you do that here? Well you could um, multiply both sides here by um, dx over x to get rid of the x and the dx on the left hand side and uh, also multiply by 1 over 5 plus y squared. So that will get rid of the 5 plus y squared on the right hand side. Okay, So you'll see what will happen. So you imagine sticking this in front of the left hand side. The x will cancel here, the dx's will cancel and on the left hand side you will get dy over 5 plus y squared. Of course the y hasn't cancelled, the y is still here. And on the right hand side when you multiply this thing by 5 plus y squared you'll cancel the 5 plus y squared to get dx over x. So now you see y's are on one side and x's are on the other side. The next step, as we know, is just to integrate both sides. Now the right hand side integral is straightforward. It's integral of 1 over x with respect to x. That's a special integral. It's ln of x. We get an arbitrary constant, which I'll put here. And this constant involves the constant from the left hand side as well. So they're brought over to the right hand side and put into one constant. Um, OK, so what about this integral here? Now notice that uh, if we differentiate the denominator, we will get a multiple, a constant multiple of the numerator. So that suggests a substitution. The substitution is got by letting u equal 5 plus y squared. Okay, Get the denominator into a single term. And if we differentiate then du dy equals 2y, or we can say that du equals 2y dy. Um, well, actually, we can right, du over 2y equals dy. So we sub this thing here in for dy. Okay, so the left hand side is going to become y times dy, which is du over 2y. And this is divided by 5 plus y squared, which we're calling u. The y's cancel out. So the substitution has given us a much easier integral to handle. Okay, so all we did was uh, let u equal everything underneath, get a denominator into a single term. That usually simplifies things considerably. And then we got du dy equals 2y, or du over 2y equals dy. So we replaced dy with du over 2y. Okay, um, so we've half du on top of the half can come out. So we have a half integral 1 over u with respect to u. And of course, we the integral of 1 over u is ln of u. So we get a half ln of u equals the right-hand side is ln of x plus c. So now we just put back 5 plus y squared for our u, and we go to our boundary conditions. So if we go back up here, we want y of 1 to equal 2. So this means that if we set x equal to 1, then y is 2. So we want y to be 2 and x to be 1. So this will enable us to find out what c is so that we can find a particular solution of the differential equation. This here is just a general solution of the differential equation. Okay, working this out we get a half ln of 9. ln of 1 is 0, so c is a half ln of 9. So now we can write down our particular solution. Now, y is not the subject of this. Um, the next step here is to make y the subject, if you want. So you can multiply both sides by 2, then raise both sides, raise e to the power of both sides. e to the power of ln of 5 plus y squared is just 5 plus y squared, and we want e to the power of the right-hand side. 
Okay, um, 2 times ln of x can be written as ln of x squared. Okay, that's one of the rules. We can bring the power down, or if there's something in front of ln, we can bring it, write the argument to that power. Um, okay, we've e to the power of ln x squared plus ln 9. So that's just e to the power of ln x squared times e to the power of ln 9. Okay, if we multiply, we just add the powers to get this, so... But what is e to the power of ln of x squared? Well, that's just x squared. e to the power of ln, they're just inverse functions. They effectively cancel. And similarly here, e to the power of ln 9 is 9. So we get 5 plus y squared equals 9x squared. So we can write this as y squared equals 9x squared minus 5. Okay, from that we take the square root. Um, now actually, this is the positive square root because... Um, we can actually see it from this when x is 1, y is 2. So if we go back down here, if x is 1, we have 9 times 1 squared, which is 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. You know, this will become the square root of 4. So we take the positive square root to get 2. We want When x is 1, we want y to be 2. So that's one way to see that. It must be the positive square root that we're taking. All right, so here's our solution. So let's just do a quick check of this. Okay, let's take the left-hand side of the differential equation. So that's x times y, so we plug this in for y, times dy dx, we have to differentiate this. Well, we just use the chain rule here. Okay, so we deal with the power first of all. A half minus 1 is minus a half, and Next, we multiply what's inside the bracket. Differentiating 9x squared gives us 18x. We don't need a bracket here. Okay, so this is the left-hand side. Now, we have 9x squared minus 5 to the power of a half here. Multiply by 9x squared minus 5 to the power of minus a half. Well, that's 9x squared minus 5 to the power of 0, which is 1. So we're left with x times 9x, which is 9x squared. That's the left-hand side. Now let's look at the right-hand side. The right-hand side is 5 plus y squared. Um, so 5 plus this thing squared. Well, if you square this, you just get nine. what's inside the brackets. All right, so we see that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, so this is the correct solution. And as I have said earlier, if we plug 1 in for x, you get 9 minus 5 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2, so the boundary condition is satisfied.